great. Thank you. I'm trying to figure out where to stand. Sorry. Okay. Honesty. Honesty. There we go. In the spirit of my own honesty, I'm going to give you a bit of context and background why I've set the presentation up this way. Um, first thing I want to say is I am using slides, keynote, not PowerPoint, but slides are slides. I have received feedback lately that when I'm speaking about creativity and innovation, I should use something more creative and innovative than PowerPoint slides. And I don't disagree with this feedback, but I haven't found anything that works as well for me and for the audience to get my messages across. So if you have some ideas, come talk to me afterwards. Um, so, but you have stuck with some slides today. I've also used a lot more words than pictures than I typically use in a presentation, um, partly because it's early and I'm really stressed and I need the prompt as much as you need to see the words. So there are some pictures, but a few more words than, than usual. Also, a picture is worth a thousand words. In some cases, I really didn't want a thousand words. I wanted two or three. So you get the two or three, not the thousand. And I'm really nervous, um, if I didn't say that already. Sorry, the first presentation I ever gave, my hands shook so bad that the, the um, VPs that I was presenting to came up and asked me afterwards, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's fine. And these are like 20 years ago. I'm doing, um, I have an accounting undergrad and had to point out the the numbers on the, the overhead, and I couldn't do it because my hands shook so bad. So I'm going to put my hands behind me until they stop shaking. Um, my journey with this talk, when I volunteered last month, I, when you're going to ask for volunteers, I thought, oh, actually the, the voice in my head said, oh, we can do that. Sometimes my voice talks in the third person plural for reasons I don't understand, but the voice said, oh, we could do that, and I found myself going and, and volunteering, and then days later he came back and said, I would love for you to speak my slides. And I thought, oh my God, what have I signed up for? What have I volunteered for? This is way more personal than I thought it was going to be. And I thought about changing it and making it less personal. And I thought, well, that's not very honest. We're talking about honesty. I should be honest about why this is important to me. And God, sorry. <laughs> um, people watching the video are going to wonder what the hell's the problem with me. Um, so it is more personal. Um, which is probably why I'm so incredibly nervous. I will calm down, I promise. Um, well, I hope so. I've got 20 minutes. Um, so let's start with a definition here. I'm not going to debate the definition. You can read it. I'm not going to read it. Um, it's just to set the stage, set some context. I liked it. I pulled it from Wikipedia. Um, it talks about truthfulness and straightforwardness and um, being trustworthy, all positive things, all things associated with with honesty. So, are you honest? Can't show of hands. Who's honest? Who thinks they're honest? Most of the time? Okay. <laughs> Good, because that's the next question is all of the time? Who's honest all of the time? Anybody? Yeah, I think some, you know, white, little white lies come in handy sometimes. I know when you're running late for a meeting and you text somebody, say, I'm five minutes away, but you're really 10 or 15 minutes. And unless they're me, they probably understand that you mean you'll be there soon rather than an actual five minutes. And if you're me, then you're sitting there going, well, if they were here, they should be here by now because um, I'm 15 minutes early for everything, except this morning when I was half an hour early. No, 45 minutes early. Um, <laughs> so I told you I was nervous. Um, so I bet, though, that you're not as honest as you think you are. I bet that there's one person in your life that you lie to regularly, that you don't even think about the fact that you lie to them. One person that you're with a lot of the time. In fact, I would even say maybe all of the time. Who is that? Anybody want to yell anything out? Self. Yes, excellent. <laughs> you, you, why is it so hard to be honest with ourselves? because we want to be liked or loved, we want to be accepted, we want to have friends, we want to fit in, we want all of those things. So we tell people what we think they want to hear. We learn to lie. Little lies, we don't even think about it. I know, well, at least I started out, didn't really think about it. Oh, sure, I can do that, absolutely. Oh, yes, I can meet you, oh, yes. 
I'm going to study accounting. I, like I said, I have an accounting undergrad. Yes, accounting, that's what I want to do, because that's what I thought people wanted me to say. So now why anyone would pick to be an accountant at 14 years old, I don't know. Um, someone should have said something to me, but you know, live and learn. So we hide behind a mask. So we wear a mask, we hide behind all these roles, all these ideas of who we're supposed to be. So mine you know, has a good daughter, granddaughter, sister, smart accountant, a accountant on the chin. Um, I think certainly women, female roles that we get tied up in as that as women. Um, Swimmer, this is a good one. I, I took swimming lessons for 10 years. I was a, a lifeguard and swimming instructor. I don't honestly know that I like to swim. <laughs> but I did it, you know, because I thought I was supposed to. Make people happy, made my parents happy, because I, you know, and that's a good thing, right? But I haven't, except for going to the lake in the summertime, that's the only time I swim now, so I'm not really sure. Um, we also don't want to stand out from the crowd. I look out across the room, there's a lot of blacks, a lot of greys. I'm wearing black myself. Well, I do try my, you know, bit of color. Um, I often have, in the summer, or sorry, in the winter time, I look down the, the subway and people are all in, you know, colors like you're all wearing. I'm wearing the shirt. Um, and I have this bright orange coat that I wear in, in the winter time. And I look and I go, yeah, I'm the only one. I've had people start to talk to me because I have an orange coat on. <laughs> uh, um, security people in the, the airport start to talk to me because of my funky glasses and, and my orange coat. And I'm like, why are they talking to me? Oh, because I'm not trying to blend in like everybody else. So I must be less of a risk. At least that's my thinking. And of course, now I'm saying this out loud and they're gonna, you know, someone's gonna hear me somewhere and they're, that's the end of my walk, breeze through security. <clears throat> so we only reveal parts of ourselves. This is one of my paintings. It's from a series called, um, um, oh my God. Um, <laughs> um, masks we hide behind, masks we hide behind. I, see, I told you, nervous, my brain goes completely blank. Um, and the idea is that we only re reveal parts of ourselves. So the painting's done in layers, and the, the bottom layers you only see little bits and pieces of. So, and when I was putting the slides together, it occurred to me that not only is honesty and this idea of mass important to me on a personal and professional level, it comes up in my art again and again. I was like, oh, it's a sign. This is why the voice in my head was saying, oh, we could do that, we could do that. Um, okay. Um, so now you're thinking, what does this have to do with creativity? She seems a little confused. She certainly seems a little nervous. Um, this seems to be more about maybe vulnerability, not honesty. I don't know. She's talking about mass. I don't know. This is kind of crazy. Um, but she's standing there talking nervously, you know, to a group of us, and it's nine, quarter after nine in the morning. You know, I'm going to see. So I have two stats in my slide deck. This is the first one. Among five-year-olds, more than 90% demonstrated the creativity to suggest innovative ways of looking at situations and the ability to dream up new ideas. So five, sorry, 90% of five-year-olds, remember that number. So these children, these are me and my identical twin sister, by the way, were born creative. We had all kinds of creativity. We had to discover things because we didn't know anything. When you were children, you didn't know anything either. You had to discover it. We had to figure it out. We had to ask questions. We had to create it. And most importantly, we had to go to school. Dun, dun, dun. At school, we learned language. I've never made that sound before in my life. Can I just say, just say that? Um, God, I'm so nervous. Um, we learn language and communication skills, how to move and exist in the world that we live in how to get along with other people, our families, our friends, people we don't even know, how to, you know, we learn all these things um, along with, you know, accounting and math and science and all of those things too. So, which is, none of that's a bad thing. Those are all good things to have friends to play, you know, in the playground with at school or have lunch with or go to dinner with as an adult. But our creativity and uniqueness is educated out of us. It's socialized out of us because we tell people what we think they want to hear. 
so that we have friends, so that we get good marks, so that we get into good universities or colleges or job programs, so that we get good jobs, because that's the goal, right? Have a great job. So we learn to tell people, regurgitate what we've learned in math class or science class or accounting class or whatever the class is. Um, and we forget to add some critical thinking and really think about what it is that we like. I am not an accountant anymore. Um, in retrospect, I should have thought a little harder about that decision. Along the way, there were signs that maybe accounting wasn't the thing that I thought it was. Um, but I have made that decision at 14 and I was going to execute it until someone stopped me. And someone did. But, um, you know, and then I went and did some more school because what you do is go back and do more school. In doing this, we're hiding who we are. The things that we like, the things that we don't like, the things that we know, the things that we don't know. We are a lot of things during this time, but honest is probably not one of them. So these are graduation photos. Again, my sister and I, we had learned high school graduation, um, undergrad graduation in the middle, and we both have master's degrees. We had learned a lot of stuff, and we had forgotten. We had forgotten our creativity. We had stopped listening to the voice inside of us that said, that knows, the voice that says, oh, you can do that. The voice had gone away. These, are, these ones are me, in case you were wondering which one. I was not being honest. I desperately thought accounting was the right thing. And then the middle, sorry, the end one is um, my MBA. I have an MBA in IT. There is not an ounce of creativity in any of that. And I was proud of that at that time. Very analytical, process-driven, great. I start a job that I loved. I worked for Hewlett Packard for seven years. Loved HP. I thought I'd gone and died and gone to heaven when I started working with them. I had all this time on my hands. What was I supposed to do with all this time on my hands? I wasn't studying. So I started a PhD because that's what you do. You study in your free time. And I hated the PhD. I quit after two months. And that's like, okay, what do other people do? Other people don't just keep doing degrees. Well, some people do, but, but that wasn't really what was working for me. I liked the job. I liked the money. Um, I like not being a starving student, and so I'm like, okay, other people go hiking, they do rock climbing, they do mountain biking, they paint, they take photography, they've got this learn to draw class at the high school near me, let's try some of this stuff out. So I did. Hated rock climbing and mountain biking. Um, drawing was okay, I did some drawing for a little while, I did some photography for a little while. Um, I have a really expensive camera that sits in my cupboard now. Um, I did um, the bottom two, oh, sorry, I forgot to change the slide. The bottom two pictures are some collages that I did at one of the classes. The upper right is a drawing that I did in the drawing class. This painting, though, is the very first painting I painted in 2011, and I fell in love. I went out the next day and bought paints. I have been painting ever since. I uh, worked hard and work, continue to work hard to, to rediscover and learn and expand on my creativity. So I've had exhibitions in Toronto before I moved. Um, have had ex exhibitions in Berlin. I have one coming up in the middle of November, my seventh since I moved three years ago. So um, yeah, and that's great fun. I love talking to people about my paintings. So um, you, there's some sprinkled through my presentation. I have two of them sitting behind my head hiding the power bar this morning because I like to talk about my paintings and, and that journey. So during all of this time, I was trying to start listening to the voice in my head, to the voice in my gut that said, this is what we like, this is not what we like. Trying to be honest with myself and share that with other people. Stop the lying. Sounds easy, right? Not. It cost me. It cost me friends, it cost me family, it cost me jobs. Honestly, I'm not sure about the jobs thing. I suspect that that's true. Um, it certainly cost me friends and family. People don't like it when you stop saying, smiling and nodding. Yes, absolutely, I'll do that. No, I'm sorry, I can't do that anymore. People don't like it when you say, no, I'm sorry, I can't. No, I don't like swimming. I don't want to go. I'm not going to do that in my spare time. I would rather draw. I would rather paint. I would rather do anything that's not swimming. Um, People don't like that. 
So, uh, well, maybe not the swimming part so much, but some of the other stuff certainly. But for all that I lost, I gained a hundredfold. I gained a sense of humor and a voice, hence speaking in front of a group of you this morning, totally nervous and freaked out, but sharing it anyway because what's it? What do they say? Feel the fear and do it anyway. That's me this morning. I've been awake since five o'clock. I'm a little. I'm going to crash probably about noon. Um, gave me confidence, despite my shaking hands this morning. Gave me real, true friends, people who love and accept me for who I am, not who they think I am. Gave me a sense of adventure and openness. I did a project a few years ago now with a Nigerian NGO for a year and a half, an experience that I never would have had if I had stayed an accountant, if, and if I hadn't opened myself up to the possibility and the curiosity. I did my due diligence when they approached me and never got an answer that I felt crossed the line that meant that I shouldn't go and do this work. I couldn't get anybody else to work with me on it because they had their preconceived notions about what it meant to work in Nigeria for a Nigerian NGO. But I went and did the work for a year and a half. It was one of the best projects I have done as a, as a solopreneur, as a, a freelancer. Um, I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about them, a lot about the country. And that's an experience that I would never have had if I hadn't learned to be curious. Oops, sorry, a couple more points there. <clears throat> I developed a sense of purpose and, and joy that certainly didn't exist when I was an accountant. I revealed who I am. I revealed who I am. So again, one of my paintings is from a series that I'm working on now called Opening Up, and the idea is about opening ourselves up and showing our true colors to the world rather than zipping up and being closed. So I use buttons and zippers in my paintings. People think that's really funky. I think it's fun. Um, I started being honest um, about who I am, about and embracing my creativity, not getting rid of the process and uh, analytical part of me, but adding the creativity into it. So now when I talk to people, when I do things, I'm analytical and creative and process driven and and it's crazy, and I drive people crazy with all my questions. Just ask Jurgen um, <laughs> over the last few days with my slides. Um, but I feel like this is the whole me. This is why I'm here now, that I've added my, this creativity and rediscovered that and added it into these other things. This is, this is who I was meant to be. Now, which would you rather be? Open or closed? Honest or dishonest? I'd rather be honest, be who I really am, reveal myself to the world, use all of my skills and ability, not some of them, be my analytical and process-driven self as well as my creative self. I'd rather not hide behind the mask anymore. <laughs> So be honest, drop your mask, join me. Thank you. <laughs>